Good afternoon, everybody. Rose here. Today I am doing a commentary video on Foodie Beauty's newest video titled Trying to Leave a Toxic Relationship. This is not going to be a regular uh, reaction video. I'm done doing those. Uh, but I wanted to read the comments on the newest video and give my thoughts on them. The video that Chantal posted was fairly short, which is quite unusual for Chantal. She does her live streams and they can be quite lengthy. But as sad as it is, the comments below the videos are much more interesting than the actual live streams themselves. So I wanted to read some of the comments and get my thoughts on them. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. So let's start out with uh, looking at the video. The video itself got 239 thumbs up and 556 thumbs down. Any more, Chantal's like to dislike ratio is always stronger on the dislike side. So the first comment, which was actually pinned by Chantal 25 minutes ago, the comment was from a person named CC saying, People commenting and mocking do not understand how abusive relationships work. If it was as easy as leaving, then there'd be no battered women in the world. Mental abuse or mental torture in a relationship, be it with a lover or relative or friend, is even harder to deal with. Like Chantal said, you want that person who puts you down to lift you up because in your mind, you're used to being treated in a not-so-kind way, so when they treat you nicely, it's like fireworks. It's an amazing thing. In your heart, you convince yourself this is real. It's the real thing. You always think you can change them or their inner light will shine on you and those moments of kindness are the ones worth staying for. When really it's more heartache than good and those good moments are like fragments of diamonds in a heap of coal. It's very difficult to understand from the outside in. It's infuriating when your loved one or friend is going back to a man who treats them like dirt. But as I said, it's just how I described. And if it were as easy as you, you do me wrong, you say something wrong that I'm out, then there'd be no bad better women, no women refugees or whatever else. It's very complicated. Emotional manipulation and the need to see good and be loved by someone can be very, very difficult to let go of. That was a really long comment. And there's a lot of things that that person said that I will agree with. I'm someone that I've dealt with DV before. I was involved in a very serious, uh, intense DV relationship, so I do have that perspective. And yes, it is very difficult to get away from somebody that you are emotionally tied with. Uh, your brain screams at you to get away, but your heart tells you to stay in place. So I do get that. But at the same time, Chantal's situation is different from a lot of other DV situations. In a lot of DV situations, the person is living with their abuser and they feel stuck. They have no money, they have nowhere to go, and even if they do have somewhere to go, they're afraid of going there and the person who hurts them following them and if they go back home, the abuse will only get worse, that the person who normally hurts them will be more in a rage and the situation will just escalate. Uh, I do acknowledge that there are all kinds of DV relationships. Some of them are close, some of them are remote, but Chantal is someone that she has a choice. She can choose to not be around Natter. She has her own home. She has her own money. She has her own job. She literally goes to see him. She goes to visit him. And she buys him things, which is also a choice. And she gives him money, which is also a choice. Uh, she can choose to leave him completely alone and not be around any of that. Do I think that Natter has the emotional manipulation going on? Absolutely. Uh, Chantal is easy to read. I'm sure he knows all of her weak points, and she's got many, and he knows how to work each and every one of them to his advantage. But at the same time, 
Foodie is also using him for her needs. So it is complicated, but she does have the choice to stay away, and she's choosing not to. She knows it's not a good situation, but there's a part of her that is desperate to have someone in her life. I don't think she knows her own sense of self. And so because she does not know her sense of self, and she has no self-worth, to have a sense of self or self-worth, she needs someone around, and then she just becomes whatever they want her to be. So yeah, that first comment, it was very long, very interesting. I do agree with many points of that, that DV relationships, abusive relationships can, are, are quite complicated. But Chantal is in a situation where she could easily stay away, and she chooses not to. And there are several reasons for that. I think it's she's addicted to this guy, but also he's a part of her channel. And what else would she talk about if she did not talk about him? What else would there be? She really doesn't have any other content. She's already brought in every toxic topic you could think of to add another layer to the story. And she's run out of ideas, and the only thing left is him. So she doesn't dare get rid of him because without him there, she really wouldn't have much to keep people interested. And YouTube is her income and so she has to do what she has to do, even if it means debasing and embarrassing herself to keep the income going. So let's move on to the next comment. Uh, the next comment is by Rose BR92, and they say, There were a lot of good times, guys. The broom, the black eye, the lost wallet, the clap, and so on. Obviously, that comment was meant in sarcasm. Uh, those are things that are not good times, but... Uh, that is essentially the content that started happening when Natter became part of her life and part of her channel. And again, her choice. She could have chosen to not make him a part of her channel. She could have chosen not to give him his own channel and feature this guy. But she did. Uh, I feel the reason why she gave Natter his own channel, two reasons. Maybe because... In her head, she was envisioning that once he got his own channel and started doing cooking videos, that that would create two income streams because I don't care what anybody tells me. That other channel is under her control and she's getting the money. It got monetized very quickly and that normally doesn't happen with somebody who's not been on YouTube before. But she was probably envisioning that there be just extra drama, which means extra money. And then everything just kind of blew up in her face. And now people know about him. More women are contacting him. I don't know why they are, but they are. And things are not going the way that she thought they would. Is she making money off that other channel? Yes. But she also probably gave Natter that other channel because that would be her way of always having contact with him keeping an eye on him, and she figured if she brought him into her world, doing the exact same thing that she did, that that would mean she could better control him, and that hasn't happened yet. So the next comment by Nashi Ho says, working on it, probably headed to his place after filming this. I agree. Nashi, I agree. Absolutely agree. Anybody out there wondering when we'll really know if Foodie and Natter have really broke up, I can give the answer right now. We will know when they really break up, when it's really over, when Chantal is losing her mind. If she's not in his presence when the breakup happens, if he does it over text or something, if she's at home, she's going to be pulling out her hair getting in her car right away, driving to his house, knocking on his door, banging on his window, peering in his window, she is going to just absolutely lose it. She's not going to be just sitting at home, calm, collected, looking smug. She's going to be in a visible state of distress. And it's not going to be a question of a few tears and then they cut off. No, she's going to be ugly crying for hours. 
going crazy with the food, she's going to be losing it and she's not going to stop. Also, when, after that happens, they will block each other's numbers. Uh, they will blow each other's phone up before blocking each other's numbers. And then they will both go full scored dirt on each other and expose every bit of dirt they know on one another. And if this succession of things do not happen, if they haven't happened, they are not done with each other. As I said in a previous video, Natter isn't going anywhere. He's making far too much money working her. Chantal's job is YouTube. Nader's job is working her. So she works everybody on YouTube and he works on her and basically that's his job. And as long as Chantal is making upwards of thousands of dollars a month, that boy ain't leaving. He's not stupid. He's going to stay where the money's at. Even if he has to put up with her and all of her nonsense, financially speaking, it's worth it for him because ever since he met Chantal, ever since they've met and she started giving him the money and paying his rent and paying for the food and paying for the clothes, financially speaking, she has brought his life up. He went from living in a trap house with nothing to wearing track suits and eating the best food and furniture in the house and getting his rent paid. He's not going to leave that behind unless he's got somebody else lined up that can provide even more than what she does. And because she's making upwards of what, five, eight, ten thousand dollars a month on YouTube, trying to find someone else that will give him that much money is going to be pretty difficult. So for now, he's sticking with her. So until you see Chantal and Nader go full scorched earth on each other, until you see Chantal losing her mind, blowing up his phone, when he doesn't answer, she runs over there banging on his door, just acting like a crazy person. If you don't guys don't see all of that and it's been a week, it's been a two, two weeks, and this is still going on. If, if a significant amount of time hasn't gone by, and you can just tell she hasn't been around him, then don't believe it. Usually these breakups of hers, they last, last, they, they last less than for say a day or two. She always goes right back and he always lets her in because he knows she gets paid and he wants part of that paycheck. So next comment. Uh, Darcy Schneider says, she always says we had a lot of good times like Toronto. Imagine hanging on to a crappy relationship over one short road trip. Yeah, and that trip to Toronto, she paid for all of that. He didn't pay for it. She did. So of course they had a good time because she was paying for it. And I'm sure he was on his best behavior. But how could you not have a good time? staying in a nice hotel, you know, nice room, nice food. She probably spent a lot of money on that trip, so it was a good time because she was paying. All the good times that Foodie has with Natter, notice that every single one of them are connected to her spending lots and lots of money on him, whether it's buying him drugs, buying him food, treating him to something. The good time has nothing to do with them spending quality time together just for the heck of it. It's always something to do with her going crazy and spending lots of money, like taking him on shopping trips and buying him clothes and buying him food. It's always about her paying for everything. And then, of course, he's going to be happy because he's getting something out of it. So he's going to be in a good mood and they're going to have a quote unquote good time. Uh, next comment. Peach, please, says, there were a lot of good times. One good trip to the zoo doesn't make for a good relationship, ma'am. That's true. That's true. Uh, good times can be just spending time with a person that you love. Money doesn't have to be involved. Money doesn't have to be in the equation. But the situation that Chantal has created, it has to be included or else there's not going to be a good time. It's not going to be a good time between them unless she's spending money. He can't deal with her unless she's spending money. That's a situation. And 
the reason why she's having to spend so much is because Chantal has created a life for herself and an image that no decent man would want anything to do with. No decent man would put up with everything she is for even half a minute. She doesn't have any good redeeming qualities. She's not a nice person. She is selfish, self-centered, self-absorbed, narcissistic, manipulative. She lies a lot. She's very uncaring of others around her. She's filthy. Her house is filthy. Her pets are neglected. What decent guy is going to put up with that? She's had a couple of decent guys in her life before, and she cheated on both of them. She's also made the comment that decent men are boring. Imagine that, a decent guy being boring. And because they're boring, you cheat on them and you prefer the company of somebody who's completely toxic. But she does. She looks at the bad boy thing as being exciting. She enjoys drama. And Nader brings that by the boatload. So she's okay with him. She also likes the element of a challenge. Nader is a challenge. She's probably the first person in her life that's ever told her no. So she's determined to win the challenge. And in the case of Nader, he doesn't really like her. He absolutely hates her. Nader does not like Chantal. He loathes her. And if he had his own source of income, he would not put up with her. But Chantal approached Nader and basically said, look, I don't have any redeeming qualities, but I got money. That's the only thing of value that she can offer another person is her money because she's got a lot of it. And Nader, he's a man that he's not working, doesn't have his own income. So that one thing that she has of value, he's going to stick around for. And that's the relationship. She's the sugar mama. He's the sugar baby. And he's going to be around as long as there's plenty of sugar in the jar. So even though he's a sugar baby and he's around her, make no mistake, he does not like Chantal. He hates her. And if he had access to the kind of money that she's got, he'd take off in a hot minute. He puts up with her and he tolerates her just for that paycheck. But all the good times they have together, notice every single one of them is because Chantal is treating him to something. Whether it's a grocery haul, a shopping haul, buying him something, taking him somewhere, that's the good times. Chantal set the tone in the relationship as she was going to be the, the other person to buy him things, take him places, but he wouldn't have to do anything for her except just be there. And this is something that will always, always, always be going on. If you enter in a relationship where you're the one paying for everything and the other person gets spoiled, that situation is never going to change. So next comment. Rira... Maya says, until you delete all the ways you connect with him, it won't end. Stop reminiscing about the good times and start accepting the bad ones. Again, I said that earlier. Until Natter and Chantal go scorched earth on each other, block each other's phone numbers, until she stops going over there, it's never going to be over. But Chantal's a weak person. I know she likes to come off like a badass and, oh, like I'm so strong and I don't have to put up with anything. She's the weakest person I've ever seen. She's very, very weak. She has no self-control. She's going to keep running over there. Over and over again. She's going to keep running back, running back, running back, running back because she's desperate for attention. She's desperate for validation. She has no self-worth. She has no sense of self, and she desperately wants to say to everybody else, I got a man. Even though he's not much of one, she still wants to say, I got somebody and I'm not single. If Natter and Chantal have not deleted each other completely from each other's lives, they're not done. She's going to go back. She'll probably go back the same day this video has been posted. 
Another red flag, I've not watched the video, but if she's in this video right now, reminiscing about the good times, that's, that's a big, big red flag that she's going back. Because you can't really stay away from somebody if you're reminiscing about the good times, you know, thinking about the good stuff. You got it in your head that you're thinking about the good times and how good they were versus all the reasons you should stay away. Thinking about all the reasons you should stay away is what keeps you away from a toxic situation. You don't sit there and reminisce about the good stuff and you forget about the bad stuff. So if she's sitting there reminiscing about, oh, it was so good, it was so great, in her head, she's already decided, I'm not staying away. Uh, next comment, let's see. Jack's mama says, oh girl, you're something else. So manipulative to your audience. Can't imagine how you treat your real world people. I feel for those people. Yeah, I've already said in my previous video, all this stuff that she puts on her channel, highly, highly, highly manipulative. Chantal's not stupid. I know a lot of people like to think that she's stupid. In some ways she might be, but when it comes to YouTube, when it comes to YouTube money, both Amberlynn Reed and Chantal, they're smart. They know how to play on people's feelings. They know how to manipulate people. They know what it takes to get those views and get those clicks and get the memberships and, and, and play on people's heartstrings. They know what to do and they do it frequently. They got a formula. The formula works. Notice that every time, every single time, that Chantal even whispers, whispers that she's leaving Natter, she'll get tons and tons of super chats and memberships. Man, they'll start pouring in. But she's not even smart enough to keep that narrative in place for at least a few days because that very same night or the next night, she's right back with them. She doesn't even have the good business sense to keep the narrative straight for a few days before she changes it. But just to whisper that Natter is out of the picture and she's sick of him and she's tired of him and she hates him, people start sending her money. And that's exactly why she does it. She's manipulating people. She's playing on people's hopes that finally they get to see her away from Natter. I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again, he ain't going nowhere. And she's not going to let him go anywhere. She's going to keep paying him. She's going to keep paying for everything to keep him there. And he's going to be very comfortable and let her do it. Anybody out there hoping for that magic day that Chantal's going to leave him or he's going to leave her, good luck with that thought. It's not going to happen. No, it ain't. Next comment. Miss Lola says, there were more bad times in this toxic relationship than good. The man doesn't care about you or love you. He has shown you many times who he is. Great, great comment, Miss Lola. Absolutely great. I agree. And Miss Lola brings up a point that I want to bring up too. From the very beginning, Natter has shown Chantal who he is and what he's about. He's never hidden himself. He did not present himself differently in the beginning. He's always been who he is. Chantal, on the other hand, just to get in his good graces, she presented herself differently. She's always behaved differently around him. And I'm sure that when they first started talking, she put on a much more improved, better version of herself. And she still kind of does it. But Natter has never, ever misrepresented himself. He's always come to the table and said, I'm a bad man. I'm a toxic man. I do chemicals. I got a bad temper. He did not hide himself. And Chantal decided to be involved with him anyway. She made the choice to pay for him anyway. She made the choice to buy him clothes and shoes and drugs and furniture and Whatever else he wanted, because again, she wanted that attention. 
She picked a bad man to be with, and you got to take what comes with that territory. Bad men or bad women are bad for a reason. Bad people are not good for you. But as I mentioned, her being the way that she is, no decent man is going to want to deal with her. She's had two of them in her life. She treated them badly. She cheated on them. So in essence, she doesn't deserve a good man. Not right now. She's not a good person. Therefore, she does not deserve a decent partner. What she wants and what she's paying for is a toxic, abusive enabler that will put up with her gross behavior to a point. And because he allows her to be that, she'll pay for him to stick around and be part of her channel. And yes, I agree. He doesn't love Chantal. He doesn't care about her. He's supposed to be the man in her life. He's not. He doesn't have a job, not making his own money. He's not ever going to take care of her. She doesn't care about that. All she cares about is just having a companion of some sort. And the sad part is, if she ever wanted someone that cared about her, she's already got that person. As sad as it is, Pete cares about her. He would never abuse Chantal, but... She doesn't care about him. She cares about a person who doesn't care about her, using her for her money. He's a challenge, so her eyes are on him versus someone like Pete's, who would never dare to hurt her in the ways that Nader has hurt her. Next comment. Julie E. says, You're so worried about him struggling, yet you are happy to leave your best friend downgraded to a good friend after Natter. After that death of his pet and knowing how he already suffers from depression, you care about yourself, Chantal. Pete's is an amazing friend after everything you've done. He still protects you and calls you his BFF. Something I want to put out there. Natter was fine before he met Chantal. He, he wasn't out in the street. He had his own place. He was making some kind of money somewhere. Maybe he was struggling. But I'm sure that if Chantal left his life, he would go back to what he was doing. He would have new furniture, new clothes as a result of being around Chantal, but I don't think he'd be out on the street. Chantal's worried about him struggling. At the same time, she's blind to the fact that ever since Natter came into the picture, her life has been struggling. Her life has been affected. Every area of her life has gone to crap. Her health, her hygiene, her pets, everything. Everything's been in a state of abandonment and neglect. And that also includes Pete's. They used to be close. She used to like to have him in her live streams. And now because of Natter, she can't be around him. And that's the one person that actually gives a crap about Chantal. Pete's being an amazing friend, I think that he is amazing because he has put up with a lot from Chantal. He's done a lot of things for her that most friends wouldn't do for their friends. And even though she's done him absolutely dirty, talking mad crap about him on a lot of her live streams, talking about getting rid of him and, and it'd be healthy for him and all this other stuff, he could have made a channel and just gone full scorched earth on Chantal and revealed all her secrets, but he hasn't done that yet. He's loyal to a fault. And that is an amazing friend. She's done Pete's pretty dirty, and yet he hasn't done that to her. But instead of valuing that and valuing the friendship that she's had with him since high school, once again, she's tossing him to the corner like she did when she met up with Bibi. Because she was with Pete's, and then she met Bibi, cheated on Pete's with Bibi, left Pete's for Bibi, then came back to Pete's because she needed someone to move in with. I mean, she's done Pete's pretty freaking dirty. And he puts up with it. He puts up with it. He shouldn't put up with it, but he does. But she's so worried about Natter and what's going on with him that she can't even see what's in front of her face. She's letting go and neglecting a good friend 
for the sake of a toxic guy that is costing her thousands of dollars a month. And she's not even getting anything worthwhile out of it, except for a little bit of companionship. Next comment. Graham Saralt Shame says, presses post, then starts kicking on eyeliner to head to the trap house. Yeah. I guarantee you after this video, Chantal went straight there. Like I said, if, 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 they, if they're not blocking each other and exposing each other's dirt on their YouTube channels, they're not done. Any talk about breaking up or that relationship is over and I hate him, don't even listen to that. It's all crap. It's fake news, fake drama for views. She knows everybody's waiting around for that moment when she leaves him and teasing people with it repeatedly. She's just making money. That's how she's making money for a channel, just teasing people. Teasing them with the idea, oh, this might be the, like, this might be the moment, y'all. This might be the moment I leave him. No, it ain't going to happen. No. Nope. She's still making money. She's got a YouTube channel. It's making money for her. Matter ain't stupid. He's going to stick around. As long as the channel's making money, she's making money, then he's making money. Next comment. B says, if you weren't such a lying troll, I would almost believe this. Yeah, like, Chantal's a liar. She was a liar before she got on YouTube. She was a liar growing up. When she came on YouTube, she just found a platform that she can make money with her lies. So the more lies she tells, the bigger the lie the more exaggerated, the more fantastic, the more profit. That's just how it works for her channel. She's not a channel where she's being creative, imaginative, innovative, fresh new ideas. It's about recycled, rehashed, refried drama every single day. And a lot of people are invested in her story. They want to see a happy ending. That's never going to happen, but they're still invested because they've been following it for years and they're keeping up with it. So she knows drama is what sells and she's happy to give us as much as we want, even if it means it's fake. And believe me, pretty much all of it is freaking fake. Uh, Big Love says, you either are or you aren't. This isn't a lifestyle change or a journey in or out. Correct. You're either done with somebody or you're not done with somebody. You can't straddle the fence. When you're done, when you're done. If you're not done, you're going to keep seeing them, keep talking to them, answering the phone calls, paying their bills. She ain't done. She's not going to be done. Simple. This isn't complicated. Not rocket science. She's not done. She's going to keep on with things. Until she runs out of money or she not making the YouTube money. You guys want to know the magic moment when Nader is going to be done with her? When she says two words to him, I'm broke. Or she goes to him and says, I can't pay your rent. I can't buy you things. I can't take you on trips. I didn't make that much off YouTube this month. That's when he'll leave. That's the only time. If she's making enough to pay for both of them, he's staying put. Next comment. Sharon says, you abandoned your grandma for Nader, and when Pete showed you the card from the vet, you clearly didn't give a crap. All you care about is you. True. Chantal has always been about herself and no one else. She has that me, 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 me attitude. She's the center of the universe. And if you're someone and you've got other things going on in your world, too bad. It's all about her. Her grandmother died. Was she thinking about grandma? No, she was talking about OnlyFans. When she took Pete's to the vet to have Timbit put down. Did she care? No. As soon as she brought Pete's home from the vet, she took off. It's all about her. And the only time we hear about grandma or Timbit or anything in her life that's worthwhile is when she wants sympathy. She uses things that matter for sympathy. 
That's it. That's the whole story. Next comment. Kay says, going no, going no contact is the only way to walk away from people like this. I know from experience. I hope that you stepping away from being online for a minute means you're going to actually start taking your life seriously and get help. I doubt it, but I really hope you'll prove us wrong. I wish you would prove us wrong, Kay. I really do. I've always wanted Chantal to turn things around, give us some new content, because I'll tell you what, I am so bored of seeing the same old thing on her channel, the same monotonous live streams. What is her content anymore? What is it? It's either her at home, binging on food, or going to get fast food and stopping at four or five different places, or being over at Natter's, or fighting with Natter, or crying over Natter. It's the, the same four or five subjects. And what's sad is that she could do so much more, but she chooses not to. Foodie Beauty, in my opinion, should change the name of her channel from the Foodie Beauty channel to this is what happens when you make one bad choice after another channel. Because everything that she does is the result of a bad choice. Her binging on food, a bad choice every single time. Her going to see Natter, another bad choice. Spending money on him, another bad choice. Continuing to support him, there's another one. There's not a single good choice in any of it. It's all one bad choice stacked on top of each other until they're sky high. She's not taking her life seriously because she doesn't have to. I mean, she doesn't have a regular job. YouTube is her job. She can make her own rules. Chantal is the perfect example of what happens when you don't have any self-discipline or rules or structure in your life, when there's nothing there to hold everything together. There's nothing there to hold anything together. It just, it all falls apart. When you have no manners, no self-training, no nothing, that's what happens. A lot of people are hanging in on Chantal, waiting for things to turn around. Not going to happen. She's not interested in change. Change means work. Change means commitment to work. You got to want to change. You got to want it, and then you got to have a plan in place to make it happen. You got to lay out a blueprint of what you're going to do to change, and then just proceed with the blueprint. There is no blueprint with Chantal. None. Not going to be one either because she's gotten away with being lazy for so long. She can't go back to any kind of structure that she once had. YouTube has made her lazy. It's made her greedy. It's made her more of a worse person. And I just can't see her doing a 360 and changing it to something other than what she is. It's She's too far gone. Sorry. Next comment, Vix Picks says, watch meandering thoughts videos, Chantal. They sum everything up perfectly and should put things in perspective for you. I know I'm the thousandth person to tell you this, but you need to see what we see, even if it hurts you, and even if you don't want to. His behavior is escalating, and the fact that you're isolating more and more and running back quicker after the abuse is such a dangerous thing to do. It means his hold over you is getting stronger and he will continue to do what he's done carrying out the cycle more frequently and with more severity each time. Hoping you find the off switch to your feelings for him soon for your sake. Here's the problem, Vix Picks. Chantal's got many different issues. First issue, she's got a problem with attention. She's got an addictive personality she has an addiction for attention. Number one issue right there. She's got an addiction for attention. Attention from everybody all the time. To the point of ridiculousness. I heard a story once that poor BB was just ironing his shirts for work and she had a fit because he wasn't giving her attention. But she has to have attention. And then there's the issue of her problem with food. 
her out of control ED. That's never been addressed. And then the problem with chemicals, with drugs, there's another layer. She has no rules, no structure. I mean, it would take an entire stadium of therapists 24 hours a day, seven days a week for years to try to straighten her out. And that's if she wanted to change. She's got so many different layers of so many toxic things going on. It would literally take a team of people just to try to figure out some of this stuff and unravel it. As far as Nader hurting her, yes, he's a hurtful person. I believe some things have gone on. To what extent, I can't say. But the sad thing is, because Chantal is such a big liar, and she's admitted to exaggerating things, we don't know what's true and what isn't. There's a possibility that some of the things she's told us about matter were probably lies. We don't know what parts were true and what parts were false. Whatever parts were true, he's still an awful toxic person. She shouldn't be around him, but she does make the physical choice to be around him. She literally drives to his house. He doesn't live with her. She makes the choice to support him and to keep supporting him. She makes all those choices when she doesn't have to. She's She's got a choice right now, but I'll say this much, and I don't know if Chantal will ever see or hear this video, but one thing I will tell you, Chantal, or anybody else out there who might be involved in an abusive relationship, if you're involved with an abusive person, at first they show you a small part of that. But if they get you in a position where you're living with them, you have nowhere to go, you're essentially stuck with them, that's when that part of them comes all the way out. When they know they've got you, that you're pinned down, you can't run away. It just gets much, much worse. So whatever she's dealing with right now, to whatever degree, she ain't seen nothing yet. She's talking about moving into a log cabin with this guy or moving with this guy. Chantal, you better not. Because if he's even half as bad as you say he is, girl, you ain't seen nothing yet. He's going to unleash the Kraken the moment the two of you move in together. The fact that you're not living with him is saving you from some of that abusive side of him. But you already know what you're getting yourself into. He never hid who he was with you. But you're choosing to stay around. But trust me, what you've seen so far, you haven't seen it all. There's more. And if you don't want that more, you need to stay away. Next comment. Wait no more for Daria says, Chantal, don't say I'll try, say I will. You can do this, stay strong. Yeah, she's, so I guess in the video, she was reminiscing about the good times and then saying I'll try. As someone that I've been through DV, if a real breakup really hasn't even happened, there hasn't been a significant amount of time, and already the person who's been hurt is reminiscing about the good times and saying, I'll try, that points in the direction of they're not going to stay away. They're going to go right back. Okay, because there's no real solid resolve there. There's no resistance. It's, all, it's, it's them justifying anything that's happened and talking themselves back into that situation and giving themselves reasons to go back. Next comment. Raining says, why do I feel like this is another attempt to take your guys' relationship offline? I will put money on it that this video is deleted within 48 hours. Followed by, I'm an adult and I can make whatever decisions I want, your decisions I want, followed by a rage blocking spree. Yep, that because that's the cycle. That's exactly it. It's all manipulation. It is all manipulation. It's a script. It's fake. It's for views. It's all for views. All of it. 
The only thing that Chantal has left to make of interest for her, her channel is her and Natter. So there has to be as much confusing drama as possible. So how do you do that? You do the, the ping pong game of back and forth, back and forth. I'm away from him. No, I'm not with him. I'm leaving. Oh, wait, I'm going to go back. Oh, wait, I think I want to go back over there. It's, it's all for views, y'all. She's got to keep flipping this script as quickly as possible, keeping everybody confused, keeping everybody hanging on, just to keep that money flowing because that is the reason why Natter is there and will continue to be there. So to keep her a companion from running off and being with somebody else, she's got to keep him happy. To do that, she's got to line his pockets. So all of this, it's for her and it's for him. Next comment. Natalie Watson says, This would mean something if your actions were actually consistent. You can't be going back and forth expecting your audience to not get frustrated with you. I will believe it once I see it. Until then, I will remain skeptical. Oh yeah, please remain skeptical. I am. Actually, I've gone beyond skeptical. I'm not skeptical anymore. I'm just calling it like I see it. I'm not skeptical. I'm not believing she'll stay away. How many times have we heard her say, I'm staying away, I broke up with him, I'm going to take his stuff over there, and we're done? How many times? I can't even remember how many times this has happened already. But she never stays away. She can't stay away for more than a day. She always goes right back. Here's, the, here's what I want to put out there for y'all. I don't think they ever broke up. Ever. I think they might have had fights. And he told her to stay away for a little while. But they never broke up. He'll never break up with her. He'll never say goodbye to her. Notice the cycle of their breakups. It, they always happen a week to two weeks after payday. And they always get right back to each other right before payday. The guy's not stupid. He knows when she gets paid. He's got her on the clock. He's always going to be there to get his paycheck. So this whole cycle of breaking up and getting back together, yeah, you're going to see more of that. Until Chantal says, I'm broke or I'm no longer monetized, he's going to be around to get that paycheck. That's just how it's going to be. Uh, Chantal's deflated exercise ball says, nothing like only using Granny's death as an excuse. Yeah, I wish she quit doing that. I wish Chantal would stop bringing up her grandmother and Timbit and saying she's sad about it because I have not seen a genuine tear out of that woman's eye yet. I've seen tears for show. But I haven't seen any real sadness. It's, it's all fake. I don't think she has an ounce of sympathy or empathy for anybody. That She envisions herself as an actor in her own show, so she's got to act sad. Because the moment she starts crying, people start feeling a certain kind of way. And, oh, I'm so sorry, Chantal. And they start tossing her money. How many times have we seen Chantal start crying? And then right in the middle of crying... She will look at the chat to make sure everybody's looking at her ass. And she'll stop and look and then go back to crying. How many times? How many times? I'm sorry. If you're, you're, if you're really crying over something, you're really sad. You don't care who's looking at you. You don't cry for a minute, stop, look at the camera, and then go back to crying. No, if, it's, if the sadness is real, you're ugly crying. You don't care what your makeup looks like. You're going to make a mess. You're in your feelings. That's it. Next comment. Angie's mixtape says, You have all the opportunity to just leave. No kids, not living together, your own place. All you need to do is block his number and not drive to his place. He can't even drive to your place. Nobody believes you anymore. He doesn't need your money or groceries. He's been alive for 40 years and fled a country by himself as a refugee. I'm sure he can survive without your help. Yep, she's worried about his survival. He was okay before she met him. He had a place. He was eating. He was fine. 
He just happened to meet Chantal and because she had more money, he decided to just switch from whatever he was doing to just living off of her. But if she ever got out of the picture, he'd go back to what he was doing. So all this worry about, I'm just worried about him struggling. Let's use the correct language. She's not worried about him struggling. She's worried about herself struggling. She'd be struggling. Not in the financial sense. You know, because she's got money to support herself. That's not what I mean by struggling. But she would be struggling to cope with being alone and having nothing to talk about on her YouTube channel. That's where the struggle would come in. She couldn't use him for content. She couldn't use him for drama. She couldn't use him for companionship. She could no longer say, I've got a man. She would be struggling much more than Natter would be. So she's not worried so much about Natter and his well-being. It's about hers. Like if I get rid of this guy, I would be on my own again. I wouldn't have someone to be physical with. I couldn't go out on the town and go to Montreal and stay with him in a hotel room. Nope. She would have to be in a position where she's got to come up with her own content, just her by herself. She doesn't want that because she knows how boring she is. She knows how irritating she is to people. She has to have someone else there to make her interesting, to make her content tolerable. So she just brings in other people like she did for Pete's for a while, bringing him on stream. And then it went from Pete's to Natter. Although people like Pete's a lot more than they like Natter. Nobody really likes him. They hate him. But she still needs somebody there. So it's not about Natter struggling. He's, I'm sure he'll be fine without Chantal if he ever had to be without her. Especially now with him having a YouTube channel. I'm sure he's got people contacting him, females. He'll be fine. It's just her. She wants to be able to say, I got a man, even though I'm paying for him. She can have someone to bring in on stream, make extra money, drama. Without him there, she doesn't have that. Next comment from Abby saying, we will all ask, will be, this be the final straw? But then we all realize that it was never had, has been before, so this doesn't have the effect you want it to. Nope, nope. <laughs> Everybody is... Everybody is caught on to Chantal's game. Everybody. Because we're seeing the same stuff over and over. It's the same. There's nothing different there. It's all the same crap. She's been doing the same crap over and over and over again for almost a year. With no break. The back and forth, the back and forth. Oh, I'm tired of him, but no, I'm not. I'm going back and... Everybody's gotten hip to it all. People are, she likes to think that people are more stupid. She likes to think that her audience and subscribers and the VIBs are stupid. No, Chantal, we're not stupid. You may want to fool yourself thinking that we're stupid. We're not stupid. We see your patterns of behavior. We know what you're going to do before you do it because we've done those same things before. We know. You're not throwing any surprises at us. And so when you say you're leaving him, we know you're not. Because we don't see anything to suggest that this time is different. It's just all lip service from you. Oh, I'm leaving him. I'm staying away. Girl, no, you're not. You haven't blocked his number. You're still giving him money. And oh, look, it's almost payday. Payday's in a few days. Raise your hand out there, y'all, if you think that Natter is not going to be around on the 21st. Raise your hand if you actually think that it's so close to payday that Natter is not going to be there to collect a check. Even though I can't see y'all, I bet that nobody's hands got raised. Nobody. Nobody. We all know how it's going to go. He's going to be right there, sweet talking her, making phone calls. I love you, Chantal. He's going to get that bag. He's going to get it. And everything is going to be good for the next week, week and a half. 
And then when she starts getting low on money, she can't take him on more shopping trips or shopping hauls. They're going to start having some fights. And they're really going to start fighting, like, say, oh, almost two weeks after payday. And then they'll break up. And then they'll have, like, a brief pause with each other. And then right before payday, it'll start all over again. Because that's the cycle. It's He's got her on the clock. He knows when she gets paid. And he'll be right back there. I promise you. Today is the 19th. Payday's in a couple of days. She'll probably get paid on Tuesday or Wednesday. Just wait. Just wait. It's coming. She's going to post a video over at his house, taking him somewhere. Everything's going to be good. And for a week, we're going to have all these happy streams. And then after a week, it's not going to be so happy. I'm a reactor. But watching her for a long time, I know her little toxic cycles. Next comment. PB44 says, she's trying because trying is open-ended. True, very, very true. Because when you try something, that means you're giving yourself an out to change your mind. Trying isn't full commitment. Trying is... I'm thinking about it, I'm considering it, but I'm giving myself an out in case I don't want to do it. So when you say trying, it's very open-ended. And if you try, then nobody can really yell at you for not going through with it. She's giving herself an out. But going on with the comment, they say she's trying because trying is open-ended. You can try for a month, year, lifetime, Got to milk this saga for every view, also true. I don't believe this is an abusive relationship. Battered women don't go public, live stream ridiculing, bashing, humiliating their abuser. Chantal is mockery is a mockery, and my thoughts and prayers for every genuine DV of abuse. I'm sorry she's capitalizing on your traumatic experience with my per for personal gain. Chantal, stop it for the love of God, stop. Yep. Yes to that comment. And you're right. In a lot of DV situations, the last thing you want to do is do anything to antagonize or aggravate the person that's hurting you. If you're truly afraid of somebody, you're not going to get online and antagonize them and put yourself in a position where they will just lose their mind and go into a black-eyed rage and hurt you. And we've seen that Natter does have that black-eyed rage. Like he would, he, could, he could just snap and, and do some serious damage. And yet she, she goes online and she antagonizes him repeatedly. And he puts up with it. That's why I think that some things have happened with Chantal and Natter. To what extent, I do not know. But I'm also considering the fact that Chantal is a great big liar. She lies all the time. She exaggerates things, and she admitted that. She said that she exaggerated a lot of the things she said about Natter, but she did not go into detail what that was. And as someone I've gone through DV, I, I have some feelings and some thoughts about her bringing the whole DV thing into her storyline and putting it in people's faces and triggering people, hurting people, using DV for profit. And essay, I think that's the lowest of the low. I really do. It was bad enough when she did the whole drug arc, triggering people that might have been addicts at one time or gone to rehab. I thought that was bad, but then Chantal went lower with the, with bringing the DV thing into her story arc and doing it for profit. You can't get any lower than that. You really can't. And it's she should apologize. To all the people that she's affected in so many different ways. But she never will because she's shameless. Anything and everything for profit. She's brought everything into her storyline. Every toxic topic she can get away with. She hit the ceiling with new stuff to bring in. So now it's her and Natter. And so all we have to look forward to is the back and forth between her and Natter.
Miss Carol Baskin says, remember when you said he kicked BBJ? He's a monster. Yeah. So that happened too. Natter does not like her pets. Allegedly, he hurt one of them. Allegedly, the cat is scared of him. Uh, so there, that, that's another thing. You got a man in your life who's toxic. He's so toxic that he tries to forbid you from talking to your best friend since high school. He tells you not to talk to your best friend. And he doesn't like your cats. And he's mean to your cats. Any decent person, that would be just too many red flags and walk away, not Chantal. Because all she could think about is, I want him around. I'll make him happy. So she stops talking to Pete, staying away from Pete, neglecting her pets because Natter doesn't like her pets. I promise you that if Natter said, I love the cats, I love them, they're great, she would take better care of them. How much y'all want to bet that? But if it were the opposite and Natter said, oh, I love cats and cats are great and I'm a cat lover, how much y'all want to bet she would take the cats to the vet? How much? How much do you think that you want to bet that she would take the cats to the vet, take care of them, brush them? But because he feels otherwise, you know, if he hates the cats, then he doesn't like them, then she's going to act like she doesn't like them. She has no sense of self. To have a sense of self, she becomes part of whoever she's with. And unfortunately, she's found a toxic person. So since he doesn't like the cats, he doesn't care about anything but himself, then she has adopted that attitude in her life as well to kind of mirror who he is. And unfortunately, it's a very bad, bad, bad mirror. Next comment. Let's see. Dylan F. says, how do you leave a toxic relationship you're not in? Yeah, isn't that funny? They're together, but not together, right? They're not girlfriend and boyfriend, but yet she's paying for everything. She's paying his rent, paying his bills. They're not involved, but yet she continues to do stuff for him. I'm sorry, if you're paying for somebody, that's kind of a relationship. Although I will say... What they have is not a real relationship because a relationship is when you're involved with somebody, whether it's a friendship or otherwise, and you're getting something positive out of it, be it conversation, friendship, companionship, there's something positive there. Chantal is not in a relationship. She is in a situation -ship. That's different. And the situation is she's desperate for attention. She's desperate to have a companion. So she's renting a cracky. And that cracky has expensive monthly payments. But she's got to keep paying them or she loses partial ownership. She's not even smart enough to rent to own. She'll never own what she's trying to buy. She's just renting it for the time being. But... She still wants him somewhere in her life. She doesn't care how she gets it. If even for an hour, she's still willing to pay. But regardless of whether boyfriend and girlfriend, living together or not, she's going to allow him to control her and take her money. She's completely okay with that because she allows it to happen. Uh, Scully says... When someone shows you who they are, believe them. Yeah, and like I said, Natter, Natter has never hidden who he is. Never. He came to the table as himself and said, I'm a bad man. I do bad things. What do you think? And Chantal got fascinated with that and started paying for it. He never misrepresented himself. She's always known who he is and what he can do. She don't care. Next comment, Chantal's foot says, Chantal buys the groceries, buys equipment, records video, edits and uploads a video, eats the meals she bought, Natter, 
gets everything free, makes money off of YouTube. Also, Natter, yes, this is equal. <laughs> hey, this is what she wanted. This is what she wanted. She signed up for this. She could opt out. There's no written contract. She could opt out any time, but she just won't do it. So expect to see more of Natter in the future, not less. Expect to see more of that. Looking for another comment. This next comment. I thought you were no longer in a relationship. I'm so confused. Chantal desperately wants to say the word relationship. But she can't. Because it's not a real relationship. I'm throwing down a challenge to Chantal. If she ever hears about this video. Chantal, you want to talk about being in a relationship, sis? Challenge for you. Take away the money. Stop paying for stuff. Have him get his own job. Have him, him get his own money. Or the channel that has his name, put it in his name. That way he gets the money. And if he has his own money and he stays in place and he's not, and he's still seeing you, I'll eat my words that he cares about you. But take the money out of the equation. The only reason why he's with you is because of the money. He's depending on you for the money. But if he had his own means, would he still stay? No, not at all. Nope. I've noticed something about Chantal, y'all, that whenever possible, Chantal creates a situation where the men in her life financially depend on her. She likes being the dominant one as far as the money because she knows if she has a man in her life that financially depends on her, that means they won't leave her. They'll stay put. She does not want the man to have any kind of control or a choice to leave. So she does what she can to remove that choice. Notice Pete's. Pete's depends on her. That's why he hasn't left. And Natter depends on her financially. And that's why he hasn't left. So the men that are in her life, they are there because they need her that way. Not because they really want to be there, because they, you know, they don't have their own means to be independent. And that's the way she wants it. That's, she gets them dependent on her and the money. So she's guaranteed companionship. She creates that whole codependency thing. And she's not interested in changing that. She could teach Natter how to edit, how to do videos, how to do his own channel, make him independent in some way. Not going to happen. She likes controlling him that way because that gives her reassurance he won't leave. Just a thought. Next comment. Rachel Hauser says, get someone to take the cats to the vet if you refuse to do it. You're a grown up, destroy your life if you want to, but at least do the right thing for the cats. As a pet owner, I find Chantal's treatment of her pets to be beyond horrible. And I don't know how anybody else is going to feel out there, but I'm of the mind that if Chantal wants to go live with Natter in a ditch and destroy herself, she can. I wouldn't even care. But I care about those cats. And I know that Chantal knows that a lot of people care about her cats and it bothers them to see the cats suffering. And I'm also of the opinion that the only reason why she keeps those cats around is because she knows people care. And if she ever got rid of her cats, be it rehoming them or giving them to a relative, a lot of her viewers would disappear. A lot of people are hanging around just because of BBJ and Sam. Same thing with Pete's. 
a lot of people like Pete's. If she had a channel where Pete's was no longer there and the cats were in a safe home, I promise you a lot of people would stop watching Chantal. But a lot of people are hanging around just wondering what's going to happen to Pete's? What's going to happen to the cats? Are they, are they okay? Are they going to get sick? For a long time, Chantal has treated her cats and Pete's as props just to get extra attention for her live streams. And she can't be bothered to take care of her roommate or her pets. It kills me to see BBJ and Sam suffer, to see the matted fur, to see them act in the way that they do. I, I would take them in a heartbeat, no questions asked if I could. I've got two cats in the house, one of which is pregnant, but I would still take them and I'd, I'd find homes for them or take care of them myself. But it kills me to see the condition that BBJ and Sam are in to know the house is filthy. But this, this all plays into Chantal's selfish nature. It's, it's not her hurting. It's not her wandering around a house that's filthy. She has the power to leave whatever she wants. The pets don't. But it's, it's, it's no concern to her. Because, like I said, her focus is on Natter. And since Natter doesn't like the cats, that means to make him happy, she's going to be extra neglectful to her pets. If Natter had the opposite point of view, she would be brushing those cats every day. She'd be taking care of them. Her attitude is a direct result of his attitude and his outlook towards her cats and her roommate. It, it all works together. It all plays into each other. Next comment. Theresa Kennedy says, he's going to try hard. Two days until your YouTube payday. Seriously, he's always nicer right before your payday, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Everybody knows this. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows. Everybody. This is nothing new here. We know that he knows the payday. We know that he's nicer before payday. We're not stupid over here, Chantal. You may think we are, but we're not. We see him and we see you and we see the both of you. You're both predictable as hell. So stop thinking your audience is dumb. We're not. La Detector says, he's not struggling without you being there, so quit making excuses. He's got YouTube for money now, and anytime you leave, he's got another woman there. Get a grip. This relationship was only really to you, definitely not to him. Yeah. For her, it was a relationship. For him, it was a situationship. And will continue to be. He hates Chantal. And I, I know she knows that. She has to know that. But for the sake of having a companion, she'll ignore it. She knows he's just around there for the money. But she's looking at it from the selfish point of view of, I'm getting what I want, so to heck with what he feels. So there's all kinds of comments here. I mean, I can go on all night. There's like tons of comments here. But you guys get the gist of what's going on here. Her making this video, saying, trying to leave it. Trying to leave a toxic relationship, girl, you do not try to leave a toxic relationship. Either you leave or you stay. Either you're done or you're not done. And she's not done. She's probably going to go back over there tonight. I'm looking at her video. She's wearing the heart necklace, which she only wears for him. She looks a bit cleaned up, which she only does for him. She's going back over there. She is. And we're going to hear about him in a couple of days. She might stream over at his house. It ain't over. Until they, those two have been away from each other for at least a week. And Chantal is laying in her bed, depressed, tearing her hair out, binging her heart out for a week at a time. They haven't blocked each other's numbers. They haven't exposed all the dirt on each other. They're not done. 
So until that stuff happens, don't believe her leaving. Don't believe it. It's just her play acting for the camera. So that's it for the comment section of the trying to leave a toxic relationship video. Uh, video. I'm not showing her video, no need to. But I wanted to get my comments on it. So thanks for watching, y'all, and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.